Hi, my name is Tim Carter. I pastor Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. This is a lesson for Cornell University students, those who are researching, that is, searching and researching the scriptures. Um, the process is ongoing. I've searched scriptures and then I've researched some of the very same scriptures. So, uh, things I was taught 30 years ago at Landmark Missionary Baptist Church uh, are still being taught today, uh, as recently as yesterday on a social media platform called Facebook. Our former pastor, Lynn Baxter, he's a professor at Central Arkansas Bible Baptist Institute. And anyway, he was our pastor here in 1987 when I came here. And the Sunday I was here, he was teaching about the perpetuity of the Lord's churches. And they were actually videoing that service and it's in a time capsule and even in the message he said if when you open this 50 years from now he was speaking to that audience in the future that if they're teaching something different get out of here so it was really interesting it's first time I'd ever uh, really thought about how could you continue to teach something for 30 years now looking back and then he was teaching things that he said went all the way back to the days of Christ. <clears throat> so coming out from much time spent among uh, religionists who are more denominationalized, latest trends, some of them go back almost a hundred years. <laughs> it was uh, remarkable to hear someone actually advocate the constancy uh, of the Bible and that it's still true today. So here's a remark he made. He said, I am a Baptist, period. He said, if you study church history, you know that for a long period in history, Baptists, which in those days were called Anabaptists, or again baptizers, because they insisted that people from other churches, especially Catholic churches, be scripturally baptized before being accepted for membership. They were persecuted, horribly tortured, and killed for their stand on scriptural baptism. Now, scriptural baptism means, as he's stated already, they were slaughtered by the thousands because they would not compromise on this matter. Thus it has remained an identifying landmark for Baptist churches through the centuries. Today there is another threat afoot. It is known as believer's baptism. He warned us about that 30 years ago. Uh, it says that as, as long as a person is a believer, their baptism is acceptable no matter who did it. Brethren, if this practice was worth giving one's life to stand against back in the early days, it should be worth it today. But Baptist churches are compromising on this issue at an alarming rate. Some may not agree with me, but like I said, I am a Baptist, period. So was he correct? And how would we know that? Well, he actually uh, taught from a textbook called Defense of the Faith. Now, it's not this book that people can evaluate it all they want, critique it. You can go online and research origins of denominations uh, even one recently in one of their public broadcasts said, well, we did have only been around for about 130 years, but <laughs> it's like, okay, so they support a truth that's 130 years old. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to them. I agree with them. So they would say their baptism uh, that's 130 plus years old, they support it. I mean, let's give it a big smiley face. Okay, that's great. Then there are those who say, well, you know, we may not have begun until sometime in the late 19th century. Uh, we may just now be 100 years old, but we're scriptural, so whatever that means. So uh, they say they support something that's approximately 100, and they have a favorable opinion. You know, they, they are all happy about it. So logically, <laughs> I mean, if you like something that's 130 years old you like something that's 100 years old or you like the things that have just starting to come about as those things to which uh, Lynn Baxter was referring but what he's really talking about is there's Baptist churches that really don't want to ask you by whom were you baptized they just want to know are you as an adult saying outwardly that you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior that is you trust the faith of Christ upon which you're declared right and all that Jesus did, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his faithfulness, you're trusting what Jesus did for you to be 
right before God. Yeah, okay. Well, then, did you go all the way under? So people support uh, what they call uh, believers' baptism. Let's just say believers' baptism. So they they like that too. They like the fact that you, um, as a thinking rational person, were of an age of reason where you could hear the gospel and deliberately cause yourself to trust it and then through it be born again. And then you came out and said, I want to identify with Christ through baptism. And we're still talking about enough water to completely submerge a person. Well, if you, if you like believer's baptism, then you'd really like the baptism taught in the Bible for the last 2,000 years. It's a total contradiction to say, well, I like ice cream, but I don't like <laughs> when you add flavors to it, or uh, I suppose Baskin Robbins 31 flavors would be a problem for people, uh, saying I don't want the best, uh, I don't want something more. It's, it's, it's a contradiction, it's a telltale sign, because, but the problem with who baptized you is first of all, it's one of the Lord's New Testament churches. Well, first you can get this little book uh, Dr. Albert Garner. Uh, I found it very interesting telling when you start going through the list of all these different groups, especially state-established religion of Catholic and Protestant. Uh, that's what our country's been uh, liberated from. We say separate church and state. We literally mean it's impossible for a state-established religion to ever commandeer our government. And that's because Baptists disestablish religion. You can read about that in history. And as late as 2012, John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning author, uh, his biography of Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power, he mentions uh, the good folks. Uh, he replied to us and said, Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declare that their legislator should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. And you can read about disestablishment of religion. Actually, it's laughable today, but we were once taxed in states, states in the United States once levied taxes against people uh, to pay the clergy salary. It was the Congregationalist who had joined with the Federalist, Federalist being a political party like a Republican, Democratic, whatever, and they had agreed that you all and us making this alliance will help establish your religion by taxing free citizens to pay your clergy salary and you all just make sure we become elected officials every time the election rolls around. Well, Baptists oppose that. We still oppose it. Now, that term Baptist was always a term of derision. It was never a term of denomination. It was never a, a term where uh, anything good <laughs> was meant. Uh, he also taught us church history, that is, Lynn Baxter did, the two-volume set, J.T. Christian, uh, which also substantiated it. There's a website called The Confessing Baptist who did three-part blog series on mopping up the trail of blood, saying it was anachronistic, a uh, nice lengthy word for not in chronological order. That's been demonstrated fallacious. Uh, their crude res disrespect for the trail of blood was because it bothers their conscience. Investigative reporter Samuel Moreland, this book is part of the Library of Landmark when I came here. Uh, this one uh, was actually given by the wife of one of our former pastors, Glenn Perry. Uh, but it, it's an investigative reporter. This was not written by any particular group, certainly not written by the ones who were being persecuted. And then, of course, it's real fun if you want to go into one of the bookstores and say, um, do you have a copy of Martyr's Mirror? And I was privileged to talk to a Baptist who was working at a store called Mardell's. And I said, do you have Martyr's Mirror? <laughs> of course, they don't have it. And Fox's Book of Mar Oh, sure, sure, sure. I said, well, why do you not carry... Uh, Martyr's Mirror. Well, it's intriguing. The reason why they don't care is because it shows persecution by both Catholic and Protestant alike. Now, when you have the only form of state-established Christianity, Catholic and Protestant form, persecuting someone equally, 
then you have a problem because it's a telltale sign that well whomever it was that these people pursued and even killed then they must be someone that we'd rather others not know about well that's the faith that uh, brother Lynn Baxter was defending and why we in America well what's the consequence I noticed on his uh, uh, thread there where he had placed his post on Facebook someone had put an angry emoji and didn't even realize that that's all you can do I mean you can't threaten Baptists in the United States uh, and if you think your little ugly emoji means anything to us it's laughable because we literally have a record of the martyrs. We look through and see the atrocities. We can uh, know all about this. We have the record by an investigative reporter. We have uh, church historical accounts that correspond with actual history. Uh, we have <laughs> contemporary writers today <laughs> referring to us in biographies about Thomas Jefferson. wonder why the political scientists who originally framed our Constitution bills of rights had such a great relationship in collaborative reasoning and collective learning uh, with people called Baptists. And I, for example, as a Cherokee, uh, why the Baptists walked with us on the Trail of Tears, leading most of us to Christ by the time we arrived at our concentration camps in Oklahoma. Uh, where were the other groups that are people that people tell us we should be so sensitive about? I don't know. In the United States of America, there's no reason to be sensitive about anything. We're free to tell the truth, to believe that what we teach is the truth, and to then demonstrate it from sources that certainly have no vested interest <laughs> in the, I mean, John Meacham didn't get a check from any Baptist church for his re referencing the reality of our history and the footprint that we've left in this world. But now you will find yourself on the Trail of Blood. You say, well, where is that? Because when I look for the Trail of Tears, I have to go on a map and look for signage and things like that. But if you ever want to find the Trail of Blood, just start teaching what the Bible says about baptism because if you're wrong on baptism we go back and check your gospel and usually that's where it breaks down you these new novel d denominations really don't care and as our pastor Lynn Baxter especially would have told you and still tell you today that those who advocate more than one gospel believe neither uh, those who support two gospels believe neither it's similar to the lesson from Solomon when all he wanted to know was, who is the mother of this baby? Well, the one who says it's okay to have it separated into two, uh, that is two parts, which means there is no baby, uh, he knew that couldn't be the person who truly had been entrusted and given a child. Uh, and as Lord's churches, we've been entrusted the gospel, so we guard that gospel, and our baptism is about that gospel. And if you don't profess faith in the gospel of the grace of God, uh, we have no interest in baptizing you, and you won't have much interest in being baptized in a manner that guards that gospel anyway. So it's a telltale sign. Uh, so you are wrong on baptism, we check your gospel. You're wrong on baptism, then we bar you from being united in membership in the Lord's body here, for example, in Jacksonville, Arkansas. Uh, we don't consider it progress uh, to compromise the message. <laughs> The message is our business, and that message is the gospel. So when you're united in our fellowship, it's only upon your profession of faith to which you are willing or unwilling to hold fast. Unwilling, then we have no reason to go further. Then we fellowship into the gospel. So if you're wrong on communion, we go check your baptism. And if you're wrong on baptism, we go back and check your gospel. Then if you're right about uh, the gospel, right about your baptism, you've come here wanting to unite with us for the purpose of advancing the cause of Christ, taking the Great Commission to all the world, then our communion services, uh, all of us here and as one body, this church here in this particular place, we memorialize Christ as the church here. That unity is supported by everyone who has come out and recognized the value of Bible baptism, which is a baptism that recognize first and foremost a profession of faith in the correct message, the right message, the gospel. So uh, Lynn Baxter might be perceived as uh, a throwback and some people may accuse what he said of being landmarkism. Uh, okay, uh, that'll be about the extent of it, but no one will uh, harm him and uh, he was actually served in the military. We have all branches of the military here to protect us from state established religious people, even advocates of it, which they're always maniacal, they're always angered, 
So I don't know who did the little cute angry emoji, but I laughed because that's about all it can do. And when you don't have anything to say, better. I've had people really uh, have a great desire to defend less than what the Bible teaches. So everyone's for some kind of baptism. It's just not the kind that we can all open our Bibles and read about. And certainly not the kind that has an implication because when you start through baptism coming out and separating yourself from all those things that do not support the gospel of Jesus Christ, you'll be derided. And people always accuse me. They say, are you saying they're not saved too? I said, are you saying they're preaching the gospel also? And then they don't know what to say because they want to make us the ones who are here to condemn the world rather than we're the ones here entrusted with the gospel through which the world might be saved. So we have no condemnation for anyone. We preach the gospel to everyone, whether you're in a state established Catholic order, Protestant order, Judaic order, Islamic order. Uh, we really don't begrudge you for any denominationalized, nationalized order. You're in occult or new age. Uh, we'll preach the gospel to you. Anyone in those things uh, could hear the gospel, and some have already heard it. There's no such thing as those things being capable of preventing you from hearing the gospel. Uh, we just happen to be the ones that teach the great news, <laughs> the good news that says regardless of what pyramid <laughs> or what form of Egyptianity in which you might find yourself enslaved, uh, you can hear the gospel, mind after the message, repent, believe, trust, and be born again. Now, <clears throat> our prayer is that you come out in this lifetime. But for us as Baptists, telling us that we to reach people, we shouldn't advocate the gospel. We shouldn't talk about what the Bible actually says about baptism. We shouldn't really talk about a fellowship and communion into the gospel and a commission only to the Lord's churches to go out and spread that gospel, make disciples. Uh, that would be like asking a lighthouse to dim the light to give an advantage to the ships coming to the shoreline approaching. Uh, it's a contradiction, but no one says that about something less. We haven't found, I haven't found anyone in my 30 years as a Baptist uh, who will uh, impugn or belittle something less than the truth, but they seem all too happy. Uh, so I ask if you like baptism, it's 20 years old, the, the new kind or the new trend, then you're really going to love the kind that's in the Bible and the kind that's endured for 2,000 years, like Jesus said of his church. It's prevalent. It can't be overcome. And the sermon Lynn Baxter gave in 1987 was about the perpetuity of the Lord's church, and I realized what the Lord's church was. Some say, well, if you teach that about baptism, that means local church only. Okay. So now you're getting it. You're getting the implications of why people deride us belittle us because we preach the gospel, we baptize those who trust it, we unite them with us here in this body, and more importantly, it's our responsibility uh, to assure that they have the greatest uh, opportunity to participate in nothing greater on this earth than one of the Lord's New Testament churches. And now, that eternal life they've been given through Christ, they can now live out with others who are born from above, who likewise have been entrusted the gospel, who are not ashamed of it and have outwardly professed and had that profession of faith conferred upon them through baptism, and then they can enjoy what it is, a fellowship into the gospel. And I see people today call themselves Baptist, and yet they ignore Jesus' teaching. Someone uh, should question their baptism, and then someone should question the gospel that they originally believed, because something's... Um, skewed when in the Lord's church there's an aversion to the teachings of Jesus. Uh, you can ask people, just name a dozen teachings of Jesus and they won't know what you're talking about. That's when I go back I say, well, who baptized you? And then they say, what do you mean? I say, well, unto what and unto whom were you baptized? And Oh, you know, I, was, uh, I went all the way under the water. I said, I know, but who baptized you? Well, it couldn't be a New Testament church whose purpose is to be teaching them to be observing all things whatsoever things Jesus taught if they don't even know what those things are. Uh, so we stop right there and then go back to the gospel. So yes, Lynn Baxter was correct and yes, about all that will happen to him as a, as a little ugly emoji. <laughs> it's a, yeah, Because of uh, the Lord's people, Anabaptist, Baptist, 
as I tell my friends in the military, I said, you all, you all are here protecting us from them, not them from us. And he laughs about it. And I said, well, no, we, we, we don't have a state-established religion in the United States. There is no church of the United States. And as I say on behalf of all Baptists, anyone who lives in this great country um, and understands the reality of pluralism, uh, I tell them, when I tell them we don't have a church in the United States, I say, you're welcome. And uh, it's an honor to be uh, associated with and in the lineage of the line of those who invest our lives for the betterment of all those around us. And certainly uh, we do have a wall of separation that not even the Catholic order of Rome could scale it, not even Church of England can scale it, not even the Church of Geneva, no order, Judaic, Catholic, Protestant, Islamic, occultic, New Age, or even a conglomeration of whatever these denominationalized people are they can't scale that wall, they can't commandeer our government, and we're free to assemble peaceably, uh, give Jesus the glory in the Lord's church, and his Father's pleased and honored to support all this. Uh, we're not, we're incapable of having a competitor. Uh, our gospel alone, that we are trusted, is the one through whom a person is fathered, born again. So if you're in a religious group that doesn't have the gospel, it's because God didn't give them that and trust them with it and they seem to be willing to uh, tout, teach, say anything. Uh, it's similar as a laugh about a restaurant called McDonald's. When I was a little boy, it was a, a burger, shake, and fries. Now, I'm not sure it's some kind of restaurant. I'm not sure, you may be able to order lasagna there, I don't know, but their interest is merchandising people, so whatever the product is represented by those <laughs> beautiful McDonald arches. It has more to do with how do we keep people coming in here so we'll even change our product. Our, our product is the gospel. Our message is what we're here to advance. The teachings of Jesus are for all of us here in this church and we extend that favor by being faithful to that. And in doing so, we give our neighbors the gracious opportunity. We don't withhold it. We extend it by upholding and teaching unashamedly. So, Continue to pray for pastors of the Lord's New Testament churches. Pray for men like Len Baxter who still are teaching the same things he taught 30 years ago. And just be patient with people who don't have that responsibility because their behavior will tell you that. Uh, their, their lax behavior toward the gospel or, well, we're, we're all saved too or they're saved too or what well, doesn't really matter what you teach. And Well, just watch that flippant attitude. There's, there's no one like that is anyone that you should consider taking the trust seriously and I would just question whether they were ever trusted the gospel in the first place. So uh, we don't begrudge people, we see them as future disciples. So have a blessed day.